If I say Oracle is built differently for AI, what do you say? Well, I think it, it means that we're built differently in many ways. So I think if you first start with the infrastructure, look at um, the way in which we've architected ourselves from a networking style up, uh, even honestly from the way in which we design our data centers, uh, we have a huge amount of differentiation around how we can scale down as well as scale up. So when we talk about AI, sometimes we're talking about really big clusters like we are for some of our big customers like OpenAI. But also if you look at some of our smaller customers like EAND, they also want AI. And so the fact that we can take our GPUs and put them in a single rack and deploy them in our dedicated region, and the fact that we can take that same architecture and we can scale it up to gigawatts of capacity in a single cluster, uh, I think that's something that's very different than any of our competitors make possible. And if we go into this idea that I've heard you talk about where performance, cost, security, these shouldn't be trade-offs. How is OCI designed to deliver on that? Look, I think it is easy to make those things be trade-offs, right? Oftentimes, it, you know, think about it in your everyday life. If uh, the fastest plane is not the most efficient plane, the most efficient plane is really the fastest. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you want to improve security, as we all know, sometimes there's a bit of a performance hit for an extra cost. And so it's not that I don't think that they're ever a trade-off, but if you work really hard and if you focus on how do you make it to where you can actually get all of those things together? If you look at the work that we're doing with this great new product called Acceleron, how we're bringing together advancements that actually increase security and increase performance and efficiency, all by changing the architecture fundamentally, such that you move, say, from two separate NICs down to a single one, um, by taking things like middle boxes out of the network and disintermediating, there are times where you can actually get, you know, that free lunch, where you get an improvement across all three of them. And I think it's hard to do, but if you really like infrastructure like I do, uh, it's good to wake up every day and focus on those things. And then when you find them, it's amazing because your customers get to take advantage of all of those, all three of those at the same time. I mean, is it, is it nibbling at the edges on all these different things or is it like we have to make fundamental changes constantly? Like what's that balance or trade-off? I, I think it's making fundamental changes, but it's in a many different pillars. So think of OCI as an example. Look, we don't have one service. We have hundreds of services. And so often you're able to um, make an advancement, but it may only be in one of those services. So when we created our flexible block storage, you know, that made a huge improvement for all of our customers to both optimize for cost and performance. But that only affects you if you're using block storage. If you're a customer that is primarily using object storage, it didn't help. And so I think of it less as, you know, there's one big bang thing that saves you everywhere. It's everybody on every team has to wake up every day thinking about how do I make performance better? How do I make efficiency better? How do I make security better? And if you do that, I find that and as long as you're willing to think big and invest for the long term, because to do this, oftentimes you've got to do projects that take multiple years, not a few weeks. When you, at the end of that, you end up with massive improvements across the board. Yeah. Well, from your view, what's the single OCI advantage that customers notice first? Um, I, look, it's hard to answer that question because obviously customers interact with OCI differently. Yeah. Um, but I would say the thing that I think people appreciate the most that is often kind of um, uh, unrecognized, but goes under the covers, but I hear it from customers, is that we built OCI, while it's a collection of services, it's actually designed as a cohesive whole. And what I mean by that is, is that when you show up and you use our product, from the way it's priced, from the way in which you uh, provision it, the way in which you use our console, the way in which all of the APIs work together, the way you download our SDKs, the way the services actually function, there's a... Um, unity of design and an ease of use that comes with it. So you don't have to learn five things. There's just one way to do right. it. Um, that is something we focused on very hard with OCI because we had used a lot of different products that were more of an amalgamation of things, uh, you know, a, an accumulation over time. And that unity actually had a big impact. It's part of the reason why we talk about performance, security, and efficiency. Um, it runs through is because if you're not doing something five times, I don't have to spend five times doing it. I don't have to charge you five times as much to do it. Right. Um, but there's a real unity of design that we focused on from the beginning that customers feel even if they're not aware of. So you're gonna be talking with Peter Hesley of OpenAI. We've announced several expansions to the initial Star Stargate site in Abilene. What is it about the OCI architecture that makes it the right foundation for this 
I mean, incredible scale. Yeah, well, there's a few things. Uh, OpenAI is obviously a very important customer and they're a very uh, sophisticated customer. They're not somebody who just shows up and wants a little, they know what they want and they have strong opinions about it. So OpenAI chooses us because I think first, we're able to really secure their workloads. And they had a lot of requirements around physical security, the way the data center is designed and access controlled, the way in which we do sparing, very prescriptive requirements that we were able to meet very quickly uh, out of the box. Um, then they care a lot about the overall cost. This is by far their number one, number two, number three, and number four costs for their company. And so, you know, performance and efficiency really go together. So the fact that we were able to jointly design these clusters, and then, for example, the work that we're doing with our, uh, with our RDMA networking, the fact that we're using multi-planar uh, design, those things in concert with OpenAI result in a significantly better performance and you know, lower cost to them. So, uh, and then I would say the last thing is that the fact that we're able to go and build in different locations. So to be able to meet their needs, it's not just one site. Yeah. That means we have to go out and build regions in different areas. That's something we're really good at. And a lot of our competitors don't have the ability to stand up that new capacity quickly. Our speed to actually deliver things matters because it means they get the technology that much faster. I know you've spent a good deal of your career um, you know, putting all this might behind relentless performance improvement. So what feels different about today's conference, and not just with OpenAI, but any customer, than in years past? Um, I think that the thing about AI is that we're so early in the process and performance matters so much that what we focused on is that much more valuable. So imagine for a minute that if you're a, a large bank, or a large insurance company. Obviously, the performance of your software matters to you. But if you go down and you look at your overall cost of your business, the, the total spend on computers is not a significant percentage of your cost, right? So if you think about it, if I were to take that number and divide it by two, does that materially change you know, the outlook of my company? Okay, put that aside. Now imagine you're an AI startup. I liked imagining yeah. I was a large bank because then I had a lot of money. <laughs> you, but here's I the knew good you part. were going to say that. <laughs> no, you, you, the best part about your imagination is you can imagine whatever you want, and it's true while you're there. Fritz, I encourage you to imagine whatever you'd like to be. Um, but AI then, startup. Well, good. Right. Imagine now you're an AI startup. Well, your single biggest cost is what you spend on compute infrastructure. So if you could remove, reduce that by a factor of two, not only have you saved money, you suddenly have much more capacity to actually build better models, which allows you to grow your revenue faster. That's a very different story. Now, so part of the reason why I think the conversations we're having matter so much more is because the customers are limited today by the lack of performance and by the lack of efficiency. And so the value that we provide at OCI is just that much more valuable to them. Well, Clay, I know you're going to talk uh, more about infrastructure strategy and then also some big launches, but without giving too much away, what progress are you most excited about? There's two. One is, I think, the great work that we're doing with Acceleron. Mm. And it's a culmination of many years of bringing together our investments into I.O. virtualization, both in the storage and network layer and improving security. Um, there's a bunch of new announcements that we're making right now. And then I look forward to the next year of what we're going to be releasing. It's very exciting. The other area, I think, is around our you know, AI database and our AI data platform. Um, I am a firm believer in the power of Gen AI and the utility it has to all of us. I don't know if you use it a lot, but I feel like I use these models and it makes a huge difference. But where I struggle is it doesn't have access to all of my private data. So if we could have a platform that can bring the value of these models, but you could actually have it have all the information that you need on you individually, I go, that would be great. Well. Oracle has the ability to do that through advancements that we're making in our AI database with things like real application security, by being able to ingest other catalogs, bringing together our ability to index into and modify Apache Iceberg format, and then embedding that into, with our new agent platform into uh, the AI, uh, the Gen AI data platform. With, suddenly you can go, well, now I can have these AI models, get access to all of my private data, and also through agents take actions on my behalf I think it's, I'm very excited from a technology perspective, and I'm also very excited from a customer and an employee of Oracle. 
Absolutely. Just something that knows you so personally and you're able to get all that information. Well, I know you're going to be joined by partners like TikTok. And so, you know, what is OCI's roadmap that makes collaborations like these, you know, such a great fit? Um, I think part of it is our focus that we've talked about already around performance, efficiency, and security. But the other thing I think that we do a really good job of at Oracle is we work really closely with our customers and partners. Mm -hmm. So any customer that's as large as an open AI or as a TikTok, nothing you have is going to meet all of their needs exactly. And so a huge part of our culture is working with customers, understanding their unique needs. But then you have to be careful. You can go and make one-off solutions to those problems, but if you do a really good job, you can actually understand their unique needs take those requirements and put them into the product. So now it works great for them, but you also then have that for all of your other customers. I don't think, for example, people know that across, say, the last four or five years of TikTok, we've done more than 250 features that were for them, oh. but they're not for them, meaning all of our customers get the benefits. Mm -hmm. So suddenly the fact that we work so closely with TikTok made us better such right. that when Uber showed up, they got the advantages. And working with Uber made us better, such that when OpenAI showed up, they got the advantages. That's something that I love about working with these great partners, is that they have real needs that we just never could figure out on our own. And through that collaboration together, their needs are met and our products get even better. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. No, thank you for having me, it's been fun.